God bless you. Welcome to the Stephen Smith Show. Uh, glad to be before you on another week. Glad to be able to be seen. Miss T, did my show air on time last week? Uh, I think so. I okay, okay. Well, well that you come. okay, okay. Well, I was out of town last week. I uh, was in the city of uh, Orlando. It's just amazing to see. Um, some of the things I was going to talk about that, but that's not where I'm going tonight, uh, about Orlando, Orlando, uh, there were so many luxury car dealerships and so much industry. Everything is wrapped around Disney world. I, I went to look up personal income. It kind of mirrors Memphis. Then I looked at the population, uh, 289,000 people, but what set Orlando apart is Orlando has 72 million visitors a year. So that, that definitely set that apart, and that's where uh, so many incredible things going. Also, on tonight, I understand uh, I need to bid Central Arkansas uh, adieu tonight. Uh, that's the Little Rock area. That's uh, Hot Springs, and I guess there's all types of little smaller cities there. Uh, God bless you. Welcome to the Stephen Smith Show. This is not my traditional garb. I'm usually shirt, tie, jacket, uh, and all of that, but I just did not have that tonight. Did not feel like that tonight. So hopefully you'll excuse my looking common, uh, but uh, thank you all. And to my regular viewers, God bless each of you all. Uh, I think there were like two uh, deaths that I wanted to know. I, I think uh, Bishop Bracey from Longview Holiness, praying for that family. I think he's the father of Josh Bracey, a, a noted local musician. God, uh, pray for that family this week. And then I, uh, uh, I think we lost a fellow church member of mine from back in the day, Teresa Duncan. I have not gotten the specifics on that, uh, but uh, praying for that family also. Um, tonight, I, I, I I, I, I have to be cognizant that, that I'm in front of a brand new audience from uh, uh, Little Rock. I was thinking, you know, I'm a guy that sometimes on the way over here, I get my word for the night because folks, in case you all think that I do all of this preach Steve and, and don't say anything else, I am an ordained elder. Uh, I was ordained in the Church of God in Christ by the late Bishop G.E. Patterson. So. Uh, I have been around great preachers most of my life, so uh, I, I, I do want you to know that. So God bless you, Central Arkansas. I pray something that I will share with you tonight will bless you. Um, I was thinking tonight, I had a conversation with uh, a gentleman yesterday, a good friend of mine, and we were talking about uh, our little gurus, you know, because the world is changing and, you know, everybody's not on television. There's uh, powerful speakers now on, of course, YouTube, uh, you know, some on Periscope also. So we were having our talk, our discussion for, about our gurus. And, you know, there's one of note, his name is Eric Thomas. He calls himself E.T., the hip hop preacher. And uh, my friend also mentioned Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, of course, is a noted motivational speaker of many years. And so we're traveling back and forth on that. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, uh, uh, he said, my friend Tim, Tim Button, he said, I guess what your uncle said is true. My uncle is Bishop William Young of the Healing Center. And he said, I guess what your uncle says is true. And he said, there's no shortage of pain. Man, that hit me like head on. So I, I called my uncle to tell him that my friend Tim Bunn, who's not his member, quoted him firsthand. And, and, and my uncle said that America is not a pain-free nation. And that's what I want to talk to you about Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas on tonight, uh, about there's no shortage of pain. Uh, you know, we have a lot of discussions from a lot of corners. You know, people say, there are too many preachers. 
And, you know, I'm sure now that everybody on, you know, there's so many gurus and, and thought leaders on social media today. And folks said, there are too many thought leaders. There are too many motivational speakers. I even had somebody, I was at the nail shop getting my nails done one day, and I heard somebody say under their breath, right here trying to be a motivational speaker. Well, <laughs> but, but, but it was so ironic with what my uncle said that there's no shortage of pain. Folks, why are we fighting and castigating and counting, like say, why they want a church? You know, folks, if you're looking at the news in Memphis, Tennessee, and even when I was in Orlando, and Orlando, of course, with all of its tourist attractions, Disney World, a lot of it is aimed towards children. When I heard the local news in Orlando, I was just as alarmed. I mean, I, I, I don't know why I downloaded several news apps from the Memphis area on my phone this week, I guess just to be, you know, you know, be able to see because I was out of town and I couldn't see what was happening in Memphis. But since I've downloaded them, gosh, they, it's, it's breaking news feed, breaking news feed, and it's always negative news. It's not just one person being shot at one location. It's two, three, and four. Uh, it's, it's, it's filled with so many things that, that we never thought that we are here. I, I was thinking about what the late Bishop J.O. Patterson Sr. said, that we're living in times that man has never seen and God himself has seldom seen. Uh, or, or what a, the Apostle Paul's uh, 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 precursor where he said, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Uh, you know, folks, and we're living in that day right now. It's as if, you know, and we'll have a whole lot of, why are they opening in a church? Why We don't need any more churches. Folks, the Bible says... <laughs> Preach, Steve, I am tonight. And the Bible said that hell have enlarged itself. I, I, I think that we get too high on our gospel hall. Preach, Steve, I am tonight. Because we feel like that we've saved the world three times. When the Bible says hell have enlarged itself. In hell, they got building projects going on. They're knocking down walls. They're expanding expanding to accommodate the new residents. It's as if the devil has already been defeated, and in a literal sense he has, but the devil is still on his job 24-7 doing what it says in John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for the steal. Central Arkansas, I, I, I got some word in me. Uh, uh, the thief cometh not but for the steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I am come. Jesus talking, that you might have life and that you ha might have it more abundantly. Child of God, my brother and sister, there's no shortage of pain. It's as if, the, you know, we, we don't need another person to come talk to me with any motivation. We, you know, mental health. Preach, Steve. I, I, I'm walking a, a thin line. My wife said something to me tomorrow, this morning. He, she said, uh, in passing, she said, it's amazing sometimes how you can look at people and not know whether they're having mental health battles. Uh, because, you know, you can look good on the outside, and you can be tormented on the inside. Folks, we're living in that day now. We're living in a day now where, where you know, you know, where, where, where pain has seemed to reach its optimum. The Bible said that men's hearts would faint because of fear. Uh, speaking of this day in which we're living in, so folks, we're living in a day filled with fear, fear with trepidation, filled with remorse, filled with un, uh, uh, unresolved issues. So, you know, I, I got it tonight, folks. But, but, but I'm saying that in the midst of all of this, how can we sit on our proverbial high horse, religious high horse, and say, why do we need another preacher? 
Why do we need another teacher? Why do we need another prophet? It's enough prophets out here. Why do we need an apostle? Why do we need uh, 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 another pastor? Child of God, my brother and sister, there's no shortage of pain. Like I said, what my uncle said, that there's no, uh, that America is not a pain-free nation. I know that you, you've been watching your Facebook feed with all those holy folks. And, and, and you know, uh, and the thing about social media is that rarely, every now and then you get those folks that post their personal problems. But most of us want to post our high points and make you think that we don't even have a low moment. Preach, Steve. I, I'm bringing it tonight. Uh, and and, and that, that is if we don't have any low moments, but, but folks, look, we're in all of our experience are not mountaintop experiences. Some of us go through many valleys, and, and it's a blessing that God has not made some of us look like. Preach, Steve. Uh, all that we've already gone through. So I'm speaking a word to you tonight because I had to be here on tonight. I'm talking all to Central Arkansas and Little Rock, so y'all tell somebody to tune in on 31 every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. and most Sunday mornings. Uh, you got to watch me. And, and folks, I'm speaking a word to you that there's no shortage of pain. How are we prejudging? And say we got enough preachers, we got enough churches, as if the devil isn't still on the job. Uh, you know, folks, look, we got a mall here. Uh, uh, the, the mall situation in Memphis, Tennessee, Little Rock, and Mississippi is already challenged. You know, we got some older malls uh, that, that have met their match and that they've, uh, 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 God bless you, Sister Doris on Facebook, uh, that have met their match and they've been in some bad ways. So we have this step mall, our flagship mall that we want to call it, and they, then they had someone shooting in the parking lot the other day. What do you think that's going to do for people coming to that particular mall? It's going to put uh, a, a, almost a red flag about shopping at that mall. So there we go with another million square feet property that people are going to be scared to come to. Folks, we got some concerns in this world. And while we're doing that, we have the, the, the fruit inspectors because they ain't go out there doing any work in the streets. They're not going in the highways and the hedges. They're not compelling men to come. They want to judge whether or not your ministry is valid. Uh, you know, I, I heard something the other day and it really disturbed me. My credentials say uh, the Church of God in Christ. The Church of God in Christ does not ordain women. Most of the women in the Church of God in Christ knows that that uh, up to this point that they will not get ordained at this time. However, I am not one to do like I heard a cogent bishop call them and call them reachers. If a sister's gone back to school and went and got her Masters of Divinity or her Doctor of Divinity, and you want to call her a reacher? What does it hurt calling her a preacher? Folks, I think that, that, you know, the church is in such a tumult right now about whether women should preach, whose name we should be baptized in. If we go down in this name, what name should we come up in? I think at this later date and at this time of high alarm in the church uh, that some scores God needs to settle with us on the other side. Right now, we're in such a bad array. The world has so many concerns. There are so many uh, problems that right now, if anybody wants to play on our team, we need to let them on. Folks, I'm speaking a word to you right now because I, I know that we, you know, if you read every Christian book, you would and read the pastor's bio or the author's bio. You would swear that the devil has been already put in a sleeper hole and fell out. But the devil is still on the job. I, I mean, some of the nicer malls here in the Memphis area now have a problem with, with, with dealing with crime. And, and, and crime is seeming to come from everywhere. We got our school systems where, where we used to have reading, writing, and 
and, and, and we used to call it arithmetic. Uh, but now the kids are, are dealing with something. You know, most kids are dealing with peer pressure about joining games. We got kids, we took prayer out of the schools and now guns, and not just gun guns, they got machine guns coming into our school systems. Folks, I'm speaking a word while we're talking from our high horse because this person doesn't have a degree from Union Theological or they don't have a degree from Harvard uh, Theological School or Dartmouth or, 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 or wherever. And, and you don't, well, you're disqualifying them when, when, when we're folks, we got a world here that seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. Child of God, my brother and sister, it's time out for all of that. We got to know that there's no shortage of pain. Folks, our world, every day I'm reading uh, 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 things that are just racking my brain that I never thought that I would hear in waking hours. We got a uh, mama's baby uh, is now grandmama's killer. Preach, Steve, I will tonight. We're living in a day now, we used to have pretty women and hardworking men. Now we got pretty men living off hardworking women. We're living in a day while our norms are being changed and, and our paradigms are being shifted. So I'm speaking a word to you tonight that while you feel like there's not, there's not room for another church, there's not room for another thought leader, there's not room for another uh, emotion motivational speaker that we're living in a world with so much pain there's no shortage of pain the jails are full the mental hospitals are closing and now they're on the street my uncle told me that he drove across memphis uh in, in about a 25 minute drive and he said in that 25 minute drive he counted about 17 people talking to themselves having full conversations with no one else but themselves so folks i'm speaking a word to you right now because folks are their brains are wrecked. No one knows what to do in this particular uh, space of time, this span of time. And I'm speaking a word to you that we need to come off our high horse and we need all in right now. We need all hands in. We need every preacher, every motivational speaker, every teacher, every evangelist, every pastor, every apostle in this hour because the time is winding up. I, I like saying that every day that you walk out of your front door, you see just a little bit more of the book of Revelations coming to pass. What your big mama, what your Sunday school teacher, what your teacher at school told you was coming to pass in the last days we're now seeing on a regular basis. Child of God, I'm speaking a word to you tonight all over there. I used to talk about my Memphis neighborhoods, but God bless SVP and their expansion. So I'm speaking to you all the way over there in Hot Springs, right by the Hot Springs. I'm speaking to you in Little Rock because Little Rock has some concerns also, much like every big city does. Uh, I didn't bring my towel tonight, so I, 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 I I got to really watch how excited I get right now. But I'm speaking a word to you that we need all hands in. There's no limit to pain. Divorces are happening before the wedding is paid for. We, we're dealing with, 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 with kids. I, I met a 52-year-old great-grandmother, uh, and she had her boo with her. She's not only uh, somebody's mama, but she's somebody's mama's mama's mama. Folks, we're living in a day now where, where things are being shifted and then and, and the mama's 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 mama had a yo got it ringtone. So I'm speaking a word to you that, that, you know, when my grandma used to come to school every now and then to get me white way back in the day, everybody knew she had that grandmama. No, that must be his grandmama. But you don't know now because the grandmama now might be wearing the skirt. I, I better be quiet. But I'm speaking a word to you tonight that there's no limit on pain. We're not living in a pain-free nation. We need anybody that can turn a frown into a smile. We need anybody that can bring light in the midst of darkness. The scriptures declare that the harvest is ripe 
but the laborers are few. Folks, there are so few people actually going in the trenches, so few people actually going in the highways and the hedges. I, I came out of a, a large ministry at one time, and we all had multiple preachers. I was the secretary of, of the male clergy. So in my role at one time, I had 56 ordained elders, and I had about 110 ministers, whether they were licensed or unlicensed. So that's 165 male clergy along with one bishop. So, so that's, that's, that's a whole lot of preachers all in one roof. Yet when it was time to go across the street to the projects, uh, we, we had like about five sisters and one man would go, child of God, it's, it, I'm, I'm waking your, I'm setting off your alarm clock. I'm letting you know that we're living in the perilous times that the Bible has mentioned, that we need to get out of all of this hating on each other, uh, grading each other's ministry. I heard uh, two great preachers, two great young preachers, and I heard them argue for an hour about the difference between a seminary and a Bible college. Normally, I wouldn't say anything, but folks, our situation and the pain in the world that we live in right now is such at a great a great level that we don't have time for those conversations right now. Child of God, I'm speaking a word to you. I'm stepping on your holy toes, but, but somebody's got to do it. Folks, we, we're living in perilous times. I mean, you got to go in sackcloth and ashes just to go to the corner store. And we got folks saying, why do we have another church? Why do we have another motivational speaker? Why do we have another this? Because we got have somebody that's not afraid to cry loud, preach, Steve, and spare not. We, we got to have somebody that, that, that's not afraid to speak the word in season and out of season. We got to have somebody that, that's not going to laugh when they're not tickled and, and, and not going to speak with the voice of, of, of little boys. The Bible says that when I was a child, I fought as a child. Uh, uh, when I was a child, I spoke spoke like a child, but now that I'm a man, it's time to put away childish things. Child of God, at this moment, there is a holy alarm clock going off. I, 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 I think I need to step on all of our spiritual toes at this moment because we can say, why do we have another? Because there's no limit to the pain that's going on in our day. There's no limit to the people that are, that, that are talking to themselves walking down the street. There's no limit to people. I think we judge people by how they look on the outside uh, because the scriptures declare, preach, Steve, that that man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. So, folks, we're so fooled by everybody's personal visits. We, we're so fooled uh, by, by how they look on the outside. And on the outside, they may look like they're conquering the world, but you don't know what's going on. Most of us are struggling on the inside, even while our outside is well decorated. Child of God, I'm speaking a word. I heard a Holy Ghost pat somewhere between five minutes before this program. I think it must be the Central Arkansas piece. Y'all Little Rock folks kind of moved me tonight. I'm speaking a word to th th my uh, number up, Miss T. I'm speaking a word to you tonight that there's no shortage of pain, that, that America is not a pain-free nation. We need every hand on the job. Uh, somebody that I can't reach, you out there can reach. You don't have nothing. Oh, my. I, I, touch me, Lord. Pray for me, Lord. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. Uh, uh, it's uh, 901 uh, next time we'll have that, right, Misty? Uh, I'm telling you that, that all of us have, uh, 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 everybody has a gift. And, and, and it, we want everybody to work in their individual giftings. We don't need to discourage anybody. Uh, you know, the harvest is ripe. I mean, there, there are so many people out here hurting. There's no limit to all the people that are hurting. But the laborers are few. 
I, and, and we got a certain caste system of laborers that they don't want anybody else to get on the job because I want the kudos. I want the props. I want, I got the big church. Folks, your big church, I, I hear all these folks that say that they got a worldwide ministry, and I have spoken on some worldwide stages. But sometimes when you got a worldwide ministry, then you haven't even worn the two blocks right around your church. They don't know you on the cove where your church it. They've never seen you come down there to talk with them. They've never seen you drive through their thing. And their kids can't come and play in your family life center. Child of God, I'm speaking of, uh, oh, 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 I stepped on some toes tonight, but I'm speaking a word because this is such a serious moment that we've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this, we need to be on our spiritual tippy toes as we see how the, 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 the conclusion of this whole matter. Preach, Steve. I did tonight. I'm speaking a word to you, child of God, that we need every hand on board. We need every voice on board. We need every singer on board. Why do you have another singer? Because somebody that that, that singer couldn't reach can reach that person over there. Folks, there is no limit that whatever your skin, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It says in scripture, what man having light, hideth it under a bushel. Child of God, I'm calling you out of your spiritual stupor, out of your spiritual, calling you off the spiritual sidelines. We're in such a great battle. Time is winding up. We need every gift that you got. We need everything that you got. We need you to use that which God has blessed you with, whether no matter how great or how minute you think your gifting is, we need you on board. Folks, there's no shortage of pain. America is not a pain-free nation. Tennessee is not a pain-free state. Uh, neither is Arkansas. If we were not in an age of pain, we would not have this opioid crisis. People are taking pills to get away from the pain. And maybe they're taking pills to get away from the pain. And the crisis is so great right now because we're so caught up on why would there be a need for another church? Why would there be a need for another preacher? Why would there be a need for another speaker? Child of God, I spoke powerfully tonight. Uh, God had tapped me on the shoulder, gave me this word to drop off and give it, it, you give you something to digest on tonight. We need you on board. Be blessed. I'll see you on next Tuesday night. God bless you.